Today is March 19th, one day before the first day of spring. This is Ted Descaris, and I'm going to demonstrate my uh, Union Pacific All Aristocraft uh, E8 locomotives, two E8 locomotives, and seven cars. They've all been the cars have all been lowered by about uh, about a third of an inch, a little more than a third of an inch, actually 350 thousandths, so that they line up nicely with the uh, engines. And all the equipment here has KD uh, center set couplers, and they are KD, let's see if I can focus on here, KD 907s, and you can see there. And here is the train poised to leave from my underhouse layout and go outdoors. As to all I've done to these uh, locomotives and cars, uh, if you go to Greg Elmasian's website, uh, elmasian.com, and go to Ted, Ted Descaris' vignettes, you will see an article on not only the engines, how I mounted the uh, KD couplers on them. They happen to have custom-made metal coupler boxes by uh, Datum Precision Company in Grass Valley. I designed them and they made them for me. And of course, here are the cars, and they have the KD 907s in the conventional plastic boxes. And these can operate on as little as 8 foot diameter. This happens to be a 10 foot diameter loop track here under the house. There, the train is exiting under the house to outdoors. going across the drop-in LGB bridge that I reinforce with metal staves here because of the weight of some of these engines. It can be as much as 15 pounds. And I'm using the Aristocraft Revolution base station to control this thing. All track power brass track under the house, stainless steel outdoors here. So now the train is going to go up my double loop to gain altitude. The average grade is about 2.2 percent. It gets up as high as almost 3% in that far corner and then it's relaxed to about 2% and then so it averages about 2.2 overall. So there's the first loop. Here's the second loop. Now it's gained altitude to get up to the upper part of the yard here.
Now I'll have to switch this track here. So it's going to go over the viaduct. They did use B units, but I don't have the B unit. <clears throat> but for a train this short, they wouldn't have probably used a third engine. <clears throat> Just to switch this track. So I'll switch this track to go to the inside. Well, I'll keep it on that to the outside. <laughs> Once it passes, I'll switch to the inside loop, which is that section there. <laughs> So I'll switch this track to the outside loop, <coughs> or I'm sorry, the inside loop. <coughs> so it's still going on the outside loop here. And this terminal track here is new since I videoed this thing last. <coughs> All this crossover stuff here. And this also, this terminal track here is almost done. It has to come around a little bit yet. <clears throat> so when it comes on the inside path, it'll go over this 90 degree crossing. And of course I have to switch this track here. <coughs> When I mounted body mount couplers on these, the cars are much closer together than they were with the Aristocraft uh, truck mounted couplers. It's my recollection, I think they're now about 1.8 inches apart mm. on straight track. Mm. And they were, I think, about two, two inches. Or two, no, I'm sorry. Uh, 2.8 inches. <clears throat> Depend on how new a production run the cars, the Arista cars, were made at. They, uh, over time, they shortened the tank so they weren't quite as grotesque as they were when they originally came out. Most of my cars were the original production runs. I hadn't done anything to these for probably more than 10 years till I decided how to deal with it which uh, you can see the results here look pretty nice. <laughs> so not only were the cars sitting too high originally, it looked grotesque that they had these big ugly couplers sticking out. <laughs>
And I'll let it go by the over the viaduct one more time. come around here shortly. While I was at it, I also mounted a on-off switch for the interior lights just because it lent itself to doing it at the time. And there you have it.